One Man's Family, brought to you, transcribed, by Miles Laboratories, makers of Alka-Seltzer, Bactine, and many other fine, dependable pharmaceutical products. Overheard between Jack and Betty at Jack's house. Uh, let me sit down here beside you, honey. Oh, Jack. Huh? What's the matter? I don't know what's going to happen if you keep on working like this. Look at you. You're exhausted, aren't you? Oh, just a minute. I've got something for you. Here. Brought you home a present. What for? Peace offering for working late again. Mm-hmm. So that's how it is with the barbers today. Ouch. Burned yourself again, lady? Oh, yes, and it hurt. Why, of course. Even a slight burn has plenty of fire in it, but not for long. Here. Bathe that burn surface with Bactine. Bactine? That's right. B-A-C-T-I-N-E. Bactine. The new, the modern liquid preparation for burns. Yes, Bactine is a crystal clear liquid that leaves no stain or oily film on the skin. But it does relieve the pain of a burn in a hurry and helps prevent infection. Oh, yes. Why, the fiery stinging sensation is almost gone already. Why, of course. And Bactine is so easy to apply. Use it freely, full strength. Bathe and cleanse the burn surface completely with Bactine. It is gentle, soothing, and cooling. Bactine helps prevent infection and so promotes healing. Always have a bottle of Bactine handy in your kitchen, ready to bathe those painful burns. B-A-C-T-I-N-E, Bactine. 30 or 70 cents at all drugstores. Remember, for first aid when you burn yourself, bathe the burn with Bactine. <laughs> Chapter 17, Book 85. Jack Barber has apparently taken to heart what has been said about the law, that it is a profession which demands of those who would succeed in it an earnest and entire devotion. He worked late again today. His dinner was a quick sandwich at the counter of the coffee shop in his office building. It's almost nine o'clock now as he brings his old car to a squeaky stop in his driveway. He goes wearily up the back steps and into the house. As he comes into the living room, he finds his wife, Betty, reading the paper. Hi, Betty. Hello, Jack. Everything okay, honey? Uh-huh. Give me a kiss. Mm. Not very ardent. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Just that I don't know what's going to happen if you keep on working like this. Oh, let me sit down here beside you. <sighs> Exhausted, aren't you? Oh, a little tired. But as soon as we get this case ready for trial, I'll be able to take it easier for a while. And that's what you say every time. Then as soon as you finish one case, there's always another one. <laughs> well, if we didn't have cases, I wouldn't be working. Here, I brought you something. Huh? Present. Oh, Jack, how sweet. What is it? It isn't very much. Peace offering more than anything else. Peace offering? So you wouldn't stay mad at me coming in late again. It isn't that I'm mad at you, darling. I just worry about you, that's all. Oh, sure, I know. And I worry about you, too. I'm all right. Yeah, but I realize how tough it is on you with the kids and all you have to do. When I don't get home to help you with the dishes and get the youngsters in bed, it's twice as hard. Jack. Well, come on. Open your present. Oh, yeah. Well, wait, before you go any further, I, I better tell you what it is. I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. I don't care what it is. Just so you thought of me. It's only a box of drugstore candy. Chocolate? Mm-hmm. You couldn't have thought of anything I'd rather have. When I left the office, there wasn't anything open but drugstores, and this candy was the only thing I could think of. Oh, these are my favorites. What kind are they? I don't even know what I bought. Huh? Well, there, there's everything here. Milk, chocolate, chews. Here, take one. You help yourself first. I'm going to have one of these. They're arranged so pretty, it's a shame to spoil the looks of it. Mmm, wonderful. Honey, <laughs> I ought to buy you something every day. You're so darn appreciative. Makes me wish I'd taken time at noon and really bought you something. What? Oh, a mink stole. Jack. <laughs> we don't always be as broke as we are now. And I'll make up for all these days of skimping. Believe me, if I ever get in the dough, you're going to have furs and diamonds and anything else you want. Oh, darling. I'm perfectly happy to have you love me. As long as I have that, I'll never need anything more. Nothing. Hmm. Just love and drugstore chocolates, huh? Uh-huh. Here, don't you want one? Okay. Try that one. Looks good. All right. You better hide this box. Kids get hold of this candy. It'll last about two seconds. This is a chew. Hmm. Don't you want another one? Uh-huh. To make me fat. What do we care? We're living tonight. Let's eat the whole box all by ourselves. 
The kids would never forgive us if they knew we had candy and didn't save some for them. You brought this for me. Besides, you're always bringing them presents. Daddy. Mary Lou, what on earth are you doing out of bed? I was worried about Daddy. Well, come here, darling. Why were you worried about me? Because you worked so hard. Well, you get back to bed. Daddy's all right now. But you said he worked hard. You see, Betty? That's why you didn't come home to dinner, isn't it, Daddy? Well, once in a while I have to stay at the office. Whose candy is that? Daddy brought that home for Mommy, Mary Lou. Isn't that sweet of him? Did you bring me a present? Well, I, I'll get you something tomorrow, honey. Why didn't you bring me something tonight? Well, I, I thought you'd be asleep. And that's where you should be. It's late. Why did you bring Mommy a present? Oh, because. Because why? Well, honey, because, because Daddy loves Mommy. Don't you love me? Well, of course I do. Then why didn't you bring me a present? I will bring you one. But you wouldn't want me to bring you something and not have anything for your sisters, too, would you? When I buy a present for you, I have to buy one for Abby, Debbie, and Connie. And for Janie and Sharon Ann, don't I? They're all asleep. Come on, Mary Lou. You run upstairs and get into your nice bed. Can I have a piece of candy? All right. One piece. Here, monkey. You pick one up. Can I have three? One. Not even two? All right, too, then. You should share things, Mommy. That's what you tell us. I am sharing. Take two, I said. Thank you, Mommy. Daddy brought them. Thank him, too. Daddy buys everything for us, doesn't he? Yes, darling. He buys our food and our clothes. He's a sweet daddy. <laughs> yes, he is. And your daddy loves you, honey. How much? Oh, lots. As high as the sky? Uh-huh. And what else? Oh, as, as deep as the ocean and... As far as the moon? Yeah, as far as the moon. All right, Mary Lou, trot off to bed now. I love you and Mommy that much, too. Higher than the moon, even. <laughs> okay. Well, give me a big hug, and, and then you got to get back upstairs. Big hug. Uh, Good night. Good night, Daddy. Good night, sweetheart. I've got to give you a big hug, too, Mommy. All right. Mm. You're my sweet girl. Good night. Good night. Oh, I forgot my candy. I'll keep it for you. You can have it tomorrow. Can I eat it now? Honey, you've brushed your teeth and everything. Why don't you wait? Huh? That's a good girl. All right. But be sure and save it. Yes, we'll save some for all you girls. Now scoot. Can I have just one piece now? Do you want Mommy to get cross with you? Go on, honey. Okay. Good night. Night. Night, Daddy. Good night. Night, Mommy. Good night, Mary Lou. I love you. Okay, honey. We love you, too. Night. Oh, brother, what a routine. We spoiled her something awful since she had her tonsils out. I suppose so. Pretty hard not to, though, when she looks at you with those big eyes of hers. Melt a heart of stone. Mm-hmm. Do you wish you had a boy sometimes, Jack, instead of all those girls? No, sir. I'm perfectly happy just the way it is. Why? Oh, nothing. I just wondered, that's all. Hey. Huh? Betty, you are... I, I mean, you're not a... Well, well are you? <laughs> Jack, I wish you could see your face. Huh? You look perfectly wild. Well, never mind how I look. Answer my question. Don't worry. You're just imagining things. You sure? Of course. Oh, Betty, don't do that to a guy. Whew. Would it be so awful as all that? Oh, no, honey, it isn't that, but... Good grief, you know what a struggle we're having. Another baby would really put us behind the eight ball. <laughs> I told you to stop worrying. Everything's all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> would you like some coffee or anything before we go to bed? Some more candy? Mm-mm, thanks. I, I think... Hmm? What's the matter? I thought I heard someone come in the back way. Didn't you latch the door? I guess not. Oh, hi, Cliff. Hi, kid. I thought you must still be up. I saw the lights on. Jack just got home from the office a little while ago. Yeah, I saw him drive in. I thought you'd been working late again, so I brought you over something to cheer you up. Here, one of our very best cravats. Hey, that's swell. I got it for you a couple of days ago and forgot all about it. Ran across the box and I was getting dressed a little while ago. Cliff, how sweet. Let me see, Jack. It's a beauty. Thanks a lot. I don't think nothing of it. I get a discount, you know. Besides, it's good advertising. It doesn't do any good to advertise with me. I'd never have the dough to buy ties like this. Sit down, Cliff. No, i got to run, honey. I'm on my way to go down and pick up Toots at night school. Just run in for a second to spread a little cheer, as it were. Well, thanks again for the swell necktie. Please, that brown and peddlers, we refer to this merchandise as cravat. 
My only trouble is I haven't got a suit good enough to go with this elegant cravat. Well, visit our exclusive shop. We'll be glad to serve you. We can fix you up with a very nice little number for around uh, 150 smackers. Hmm. You kidding? You do need a new suit, though, Jack. Yeah, but not at that joint of Cliffs. When I get a suit, it'll be one of those three flights up jobs. Yeah, do like me. Dress well and pay later. Well, I got a shove off. You want my car? Thanks. I'm using Paul's tonight. I got a rotation system. <laughs> Besides, I'm never sure I'm going to get there in that thing of yours. <laughs> you got something there. Yeah. Well, I'll be shoving off. Uncle Cliff. Well, hello there, Mary Lou. Mary Lou. You certainly stole down those stairs quietly, honey. Jack, will you speak to her? My fault. I probably waked her up. Oh, no, she was down here about two minutes ago. What are you doing down here again? I wanted to see Uncle Cliff. Well, honey, that's awful sweet, and your Uncle Cliff's mighty glad to see you. Will you read me a story? Uncle Cliff has to go. Are you going to see your girl? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I am, Mary Lou. Toots you? That's right. Can I call her Aunt Tip? <laughs> Mary Lou. Can I, Uncle Cliff? Sure you can, sweetheart. You can call her Aunt Toots all you want to. Maybe someday I'll make it official. The barbers will be back in just a moment. Friends, it can pay to remember Alka-Seltzer when you suffer from the discomfort of acid indigestion. Yes, take Alka-Seltzer for welcome relief from this distress. Just drop one or two Alka-Seltzer tablets into a glass of water, then drink that sparkling, refreshing solution. Alka-Seltzer acts quickly to reduce excess gastric acidity and so relieves the discomfort of acid indigestion. Take Alka-Seltzer next time and see for yourself how it helps you feel better fast. Always keep Alka-Seltzer handy. Get it at any drugstore. Here's the family again. Jack, do you suppose Cliff was serious, what he said about Toots? Search me. I just can't imagine him married somehow. <laughs> That's what people said about us once, Betty, and now look at us. Six kids. Come on, let's go to bed. <laughs> Remember, friends, when you burn yourself, bathe that burn with Bactine. B-A-C-T-I-N-E, Bactine, the gentle, modern first aid treatment for burns, is soothing and cooling to the burned area of the skin. It reduces pain, and the germ-killing action of Bactine helps prevent infection and thus promotes healing. Get a 30 or 70 cent size bottle of Bactine at any drugstore. Keep that Bactine bottle handy, and when you burn yourself, bathe that burn with Bactine. And read the descriptive folder that comes with Bactine for its many, many other helpful uses in the home. Remember, B-A-C-T-I-N-E, Bactine. One Man's Family is brought to you every weekday night at this time, transcribed, by Miles Laboratories, makers of Alka-Seltzer. Tomorrow, Ah, These Women, Chapter 18, Book 85. This is a Carlton E. Morse production. Directed by Michael Raffetto. Forest fires are a threat to our national defense program. Our forests and grasslands provide much of the raw materials essential to keep our nation strong. Nine out of ten forest fires are man-caused and can be prevented by getting rid of careless practices. Follow these four simple rules of forest fire prevention. One, crush out cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Two, break matches in two after using. Three, drown all campfires, then stir and drown again. And four, find out the law before using fire. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. (laughs) 